Hello and welcome back to Steven Data. Today, in this video, we are going to talk about two common terms, big data and traditional data. Because spending time with data is the first step of dealing with business problems, so it's important to know what we are looking at. Consequently, we are going to explain what are these two terms exactly. We are going to answer the question that says, when traditional data turns into big data, what opportunities can they provide for companies? What are their weaknesses? And lots of other questions that must be answered because in real world problems, you will face these two types of data a lot and you should be able to know how to deal with them properly because each of them has its own specific ways to be analyzed. Okay, that's enough. Let's dive into their definitions to see what we can get from them. Before explaining the terms, let's see what data really is. Data is defined as information stored in digital format which can then be used as a base for performing analysis and decision making. Now, since we have the definition of data, let's see what traditional data is. Traditional data is structured, like tables that contain numeric and text values and it can be based on a centralized database architecture, which means it can be managed from just one computer and it still accounts for the majority of the world's data. On the other hand, big data as its name suggests is big in terms of volume compared to traditional data. but it's not all the case why we call it big. Big data usually has various formats. It can contain structured data, like the tables we have in traditional data, semi-structured data, like emails you usually get, and finally, unstructured data, like video and audio files, but it's not finished yet. It's more common to see that big data is characterized by some Vs, which are known as Vs of big data. Sometimes we have 3, 5 or in some cases we have 11 Vs that characterize big data. But the most common Vs that characterize big data are these four. Volume, variety, veracity and velocity which I will give you their definitions later on. Now it's time to see the differences between these two types of data. Actually, several characteristics are used to distinguish between these two, but the most popular ones are the size of the data, how the data is organized, the architecture required to manage the data, the sources from which the data derives, the methods used to analyze the data. Okay, it's time to figure out what each factor has for us. About the size, I should say that traditional data sets tend to be measured in gigabytes and terabytes. As a result, their size can allow for centralized storage, even on one server. Big data is distinguished not only by its size, but also by its volume. Big data is usually measured in petabytes, zettabytes, or exabytes. The increasingly large size of big data sets is one of the main drivers behind the demand for more modern, high-capacity, cloud-based data storage solutions. About the organization, I should say, traditional data is normally a structured data that is organized in records, files, and tables. Fields in traditional datasets are relational, so it's possible to work out their relationship and manipulate the data accordingly. Traditional databases such as SQL, Oracle DB, and MySQL use a fixed schema that is static and pre-configured. On the other hand, big data uses a dynamic schema. In a storage, big data is raw and unstructured. When big data is accessed, the dynamic schema is applied to the raw data. Modern, non-relational or no SQL databases like Cassandra and MongoDB are ideal for unstructured data, given the way they store data in files. About the architecture, I should say 
Traditional data is typically managed using a centralized architecture, which can be more cost-effective and secure for smaller structured datasets. In general, a centralized system consists of one or more client nodes, for example, computer or mobile devices, connected to a central node, for example, a server. The central server controls the network and monitors its security. In big data, because of its scale and complexity, it is not possible to manage it centrally. It requires a distributed architecture. Distributed systems link multiple servers or computers over one network, operating as co-equal nodes. The architecture can scale horizontally and it means it will continue functioning even if an individual node fails. About the sources, I should say traditional data typically derives from enterprise resource planning or ERP, customer relationship management or CRM, online transactions, and other enterprise-level data. Big data derives from a broader range of enterprise and non-enterprise-level data, which can include information scraped from social media, device and sensor data, and audiovisual data. Unstructured data sources can also include text, video, image, and audio files. Leveraging this type of data isn't possible using the columns and rows of traditional databases because an increasingly significant amount of data is unstructured and comes from multiple sources and the big data analysis methods are required to extract value from it. And finally, about the analysis, I should say, traditional data analysis occurs incrementally. An event occurs data is generated and the analysis of this data takes place after the event. Traditional data analysis can help businesses understand the impacts of given strategies or changes on a limited range of metrics over a specific period. Big data analysis can occur in real time because big data generates on a second by second basis. Analysis can occur as the data is being collected. Big data analysis offers businesses a more dynamic and holistic understanding of their needs and strategies. For example, suppose a business has invested in a training program for its staff and wants to measure its impact. Under a traditional model of data analysis, the business might set out to determine the impact of training program on a particular area of its operations, such as sales. The business notes the sales volume before and after the training and excludes any extraneous factors. It can, in theory, see how much sales have increased as a result of the training. However, under a big model of data analysis, the business can set aside questions regarding how the training program has impacted any particular aspect of its operations. Instead, by analyzing a mass of data collected in real time across the whole business, it can identify the specific areas that have been impacted, such as sales, customer service, public relations, and more. But uh, before wrapping up this video, I should mention some points about each type of data. Big data and traditional data serve different but related purposes. While it may seem as if big data has greater potential benefits, it isn't suitable or necessary in all circumstances. Big data can provide a deeper analysis of market trends and consumer behavior. Traditional data analysis can be more narrow and too restricted to deliver the meaningful insights big data can provide. Big data provides insights faster. Organizations can learn from big data in real time. In the context of big data analytics, it can provide a competitive edge. Big data is more efficient. The increasingly digital nature of our society means people and businesses are generating vast quantities of data every day and every minute. Big data allows us to harness this data and interpret it in a meaningful way. Big data requires advanced preparation. To leverage these benefits, organizations need to prepare for big data through new security protocols, configuration steps and increases in available processing power. However, the rise of big data doesn't mean that traditional data is going away. 
and big data benefits are overriding traditional ones because traditional data can be easier to secure, which may make it preferable for highly sensitive personal or confidential data sets. Because traditional data is smaller, it doesn't require distributed architecture and is less likely to require third-party storage. Traditional data can be processed using conventional data processing software and a normal system configuration. Processing big data generally requires a higher configuration setup, which can increase resource usage and costs unnecessarily when traditional data methods will suffice. Traditional data is easier to manipulate and interpret because traditional data is simpler and relational in nature. It can be processed using normal functions and may even be accessible to non-experts. Okay, to wrap up this video, let's review again what we learned from this video exactly. First, we learned that data is the first step to understanding business problems. And to accomplish this task, we should know what data we are dealing with. Traditional data is the data we usually see in normal situations like tables that contain numeric and text values. On the other hand, big data is a more advanced type of data and besides its volume, it contains various types of data like unstructured and semi-structured data in addition to ordinary structured data. And ultimately, it's worth mentioning this point. This isn't a question of choosing between big data and traditional data. As more and more companies generate a large unstructured datasets, you will need the right tools in your toolbox. Understanding how to use and support both models is a necessary part of updating your strategy to be ready for a big data future. And that's done. Congratulations! Now you know what's the difference between big data and traditional data. You know their definitions and most important, you are one step closer to becoming a data scientist. Finally, if you liked the video, please hit that like button and if you are interested in this type of subject, please consider subscribing to this channel. By the way, I know that I did not say anything about these, but don't worry, I will talk about them soon and I will teach you what those V's stand for. I hope this video helped you a lot and until next video, happy learning.